San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a vigil for the victim of the deadliest human smuggling case in U.S. history. What local officials are now saying about the investigation. Outside with live cam, we had more showers and storms in the area yesterday, producing more beneficial rain around here. We'll talk to Mike Osterhage in just one moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is June 29th. Thanks for joining us this morning. I know a lot of people got some relief yesterday in the form of showers. Haven't heard storms around here in a while, Mike Osterhage. The uh, thunder actually scared the bejesus out of me last night. Yeah, it did. I mean, I, even our pets were kind of like, well, what in the world is that? And folks are just giddy about one of our uh, photogs, Tim, in the newsroom and was asking about it at the airport, just a third of an inch. Now, I don't mean to say just, that, that's wonderful, but then other spots, even around the metropolitan area, picked up two, three inches of rain estimates. So, but yeah, folks are just, it's like, yay, we got rain. I mean, it's so wonderful to step outside. Humidity's a little higher, but that's thanks to that, uh, the moisture in the ground. So there's nothing out there as of right now. 73 degrees, 68 Ball Verde, Bernie Stage, uh, 67 Comfort, as well as Kerrville, and 72's there, Stinson, and also in Converse. And yeah, there's a fair amount of humidity. Again, a lot of this is because of the moisture in the ground, but then look at that up around Comfort. That's, uh, well, fairly nice with those two points down or in the uh, upper 50s as of right now. We do have a moderate amount of mold. Just taking a guess that that's either going to be staying steady or going up, given the fact we do have this extra moisture out there. And throughout the day, it's going to be different than yesterday. We are going to have more sunshine. And while there's still a chance for a couple of showers around here, the chances are much, much lower, just one or two of them. So I, yeah, I've got the, the graphic on there with the little uh, thunderstorm cloud, but it's not going to be as widespread wind out of the northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Still, we keep some small rain chances in the forecast the next couple of days. Um, yeah, one or two of them here and there. Then get ready for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was shot while driving along I-35 and I-10 near downtown overnight. Happened near the intersection of Frio Street and Cesar Chavez around 1030 last night. SAPD says the man was driving when another vehicle pulled up next to him and a passenger in the vehicle started shooting. Police say the driver of the first vehicle was hit under his eye and the bullet exited his neck. The man was able to exit South Alamo, get to a bus station to call for help. He was taken to a hospital. So far, we have no word on his condition. And then we also have a silver alert. The Alice Police Department west of Corpus Christi is searching for Mario Maraquin. He is 80 years old, weighs about 230 pounds, and is diagnosed with a cognitive impairment. He was last seen in Alice on Sunday driving a white 2020 Subaru with a Texas license plate of LKF2DV. Law enforcement officials believe his disappearance poses a credible threat to his own health and safety. If you have any information, you are asked to contact the Alice Police Department. That number is 361-664-0186. New details this morning about the horrifying conditions inside that truck packed with migrants. More than 50 of them have now died, a tragedy highlighting a growing crisis along the southern border. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Last night, a vigil in San Antonio for the victims of the deadliest human smuggling case in U.S. history. 51 lives lost. I'm so fed up. I'm so tired. For Jessica Azua, this tragedy hits close to home. I came here when I was 14 years old in an 18-wheeler as well, and I passed out from the heat. I was lucky that I woke up. Officials say at least 62 migrants were stuffed into the back of this tractor trailer, abandoned Monday in the Texas heat, temperatures topping 100 degrees. By the time first responders arrived, most of the men, women and children were already dead. The floor of the trailer was covered with dead bodies. The survivors rushed to the hospital, some in critical condition. San Antonio's archbishop visited them in their beds. The only one with the strength to speak was a 16-year-old girl. They were all with tubes. They couldn't talk at all. At least three people have been taken into custody, including the truck driver. Investigators tracing the truck's registration to a home in San Antonio and detaining two men from Mexico on weapons charges. Human smuggling, a growing problem now because of the record surge of migrants arriving at the border from Central America and Mexico. 239,000 were detained last month alone. The lead investigator on this case telling me that he is increasingly concerned for the fate of migrants with migration increasing 
increasing along the southwest border because smugglers are putting more people into increasingly hazardous vehicles. Border Patrol officials now with this warning to people desperate to cross into the U.S. With the rising temperatures of South Texas, this is a guaranteed death sentence. It's not worth it. Do not place your life or the lives of your loved ones in the hands of these criminals. And that was ABC's Andrew Denbert reporting. House Select Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attacks. Her testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson yesterday. She's a former aide to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. She told the committee Tuesday that former President Trump was warned about potential violence and crimes and that he wanted supporters with weapons let into his January 6th rally. She also said that he then demanded his security detail take him to the Capitol. When the events of the Capitol turned violent, she testified that the president declined to intervene. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has opened an emergency center in response to the U.S. monkeypox outbreak. The CDC just announced the activation of its emergency operations center. It will be used to deal with the outbreak response from the government as well as non-government agencies' response. The facility was already supporting the CDC's reaction to the pandemic. It is also where experts monitor other pub public health emergencies like hurricanes, earthquakes, and oil spills. Also, the Biden administration has announced plans to offer more monkeypox vaccines in states with high case rates. The United States has announced a new round of sanctions against Russia that includes a ban on new imports of gold. That's after a consensus was reportedly reached by G7 leaders to reduce Russia's revenue during the summit in Germany. The new sanctions target 70 entities, many of which are critical to Russia's defense base. The imports of Russian origin gold will into the U.S. will now be prohibited. Three G7 members, including the U.K., Canada, and Japan, all joining in sanctioning measures. The import ban will apply to newly mined or refined gold. And time now, 437 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead, the Spurs' newest recruits get ready for summer league play. And the Texas Longhorns football team showing off its stellar recruiting class of 2023. And it seems to be all good news for the 40 acres. Checking traffic right now. We'll see how things are looking out there very early on your Wednesday morning. No problems to report 35 and Loop 410. And taking a look outside with live cam the morning after a lot of rain for some people. 71 degrees right now. We'll be checking in with Mike to see what we can expect for the rest of your day. Welcome back. The Utah Jazz are finalizing a five-year contract to make former Spurs, now Boston Celtics assistant coach Will Hardy, their next head coach. When done, Hardy, who's now 34, will be the youngest coach in the NBA, beating out three other finalists. He'll replace Quinn Snyder, who resigned earlier this month after leading the Jazz the last eight seasons with a 372-264 to record. Included six trips to the playoffs. Hardy spent 11 seasons in San Antonio as an intern, video coordinator, and later assistant coach. Well, now the Spurs' three first round draft picks have been appropriately introduced to the city of San Antonio and their new home, the AT&T Center. Now they can get down to the business of starting their life on the court. Summer League games in Vegas start in less than two weeks on July 8th. It'll be a good first look at all three. Number nine overall, Jeremy Sohan out of Baylor. Wingman Malachi Brenham from Ohio State and Notre Dame guard Blake Wesley have already started to form a bond. We just, we got, you know, our, our group chats of right now. Yeah. Um, we're supposed to be meeting a couple dudes um, like Josh Primo and all them later. I'm pretty sure I'm doing that throughout this week, so we're excited. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, DeJounte Mari texted me, which is really cool. And, yeah. I feel like he already, you know, is making a connection with us and he, sure. you know, wants to help us out. And I feel like we're, we're going to be sponges and just learn from them. Texas Longhorns reaping the benefits of having the number one recruit in the nation and quarterback Arch Manning's commit to the 40 acres for the class of 2023. Longhorns have a commitment from five-star defensive back Derek Williams. He's a 6'2", 185-pounder out of Westgate High in New Iberia, Louisiana. He chose Texas after his weekend visit over uh, a and Alabama, Miami, LSU, Clemson, and OU, according to ESPN. That's a total of seven new players who have committed to Texas just since Manning made his announcement. And check out the big ring reveal on social media by UTSA safety Rashad Wisdom. That's what you get when you win the Conference USA title for the first time in school history. 
comes complete with a trophy and inscribed CUSA champion on the side. Comes after the Roadrunners finished their season 12 and 2 overall and beat Western Kentucky in a wild game back in December. And again, congratulations to the runners. Yeah, congrats. A very nice ring. Time now 442 and 71 degrees for now. Let's look outside with Trans Guide. I-35 at Loop 410. Things are moving this morning. We'll be right back. Now let's take a look at the roads with Trans Guide right now at 445. Looking at I-35 at Loop 410 again where things are moving. Didn't seem to have any problems, but we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos in our next half hour. That's right. No puddles that I saw on the way in this morning after some showers and storms. Mike Osterhage is joining us now with more on that, I believe. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, so the rainfall totals wound up being fairly impressive in some spots. Yeah, I can show you that in, in just a second. But, I mean, you could also, besides hearing the rain, hearing the thunder, I think we could hear just the our lawns just kind of going... Just sucking in all that beautiful moisture out there. It was just, oh, just fantastic. I mean, just looking outside, watching it. And this picture's from yesterday. And, of course, then the previous day, Poth missed out on some of the rain. But today, it was a blessing. Oh, yes, indeed. A little bit of a hail in some spots. Pea-size hail. But, yeah, look at that. What is that? Two and three-quarters inches right there. Boy, that's just fantastic. And that was, I mean, we had a lot of two, two and a half, three inch rainfall amounts. I'll show you that in one second. Um, right now, we've got some clouds hanging around here. And yeah, we haven't seen any puddles left over. There may be a couple of spots here and there just because we had some of those heavier downpours. But the uh, the swath of rain was pretty much from parts of the hill country, Kendall, uh, Bandera counties, down through San Antonio, and then down to the uh, southeast over there toward Victoria. And some of these spots, again, uh, um, three, just over three inches of rain, Wilson County, down around Pleasanton, over an inch of rain, just to the west of Medina Lake, almost two inches and three and a half inches going up I-10 just past Bernie and then in the metropolitan area now officially out there at the airport uh, just over a third of an inch 0.34 inches to be exact and you can see how right there but then go a couple of miles off to the east and converse up three inches of rain these are radar estimates and almost uh, four inches three and a half plus up toward New Braunfels on the southwest side about three inches of rain and down around Floresville two and a half inches Medina Lake then another spot almost two inches of rain so it was just fantastic now we will still have a couple of showers left over today not as many though so temperatures are in the uh, low 70s as of right now will warm up fairly quickly and again there's a more humidity just because of the moisture in the ground not complaining about it in this situation, 85 at 11 o'clock, 88 at noon. Then we will start to see again a couple of showers out there. Fewer further between than yesterday. It is going to be hotter getting up to 95. We stayed at 91 yesterday, by the way. Satellite picture. And once again, I don't think we get tired of just watching this loop go through again and those beautiful showers and thunderstorms that moved on through here. What we are watching, though, for the next couple of days is this low out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the one we were watching yesterday. And some of the computer models were taking it. You know, there was that that really uh, divergent solution as far as con computer models. One had it east, one had it west. Well, now everything is kind of catching or getting in line, if you will. First of all, today we will have, again, just one or two of those showers, uh, maybe a thunderstorm out there. Then we go into tomorrow. And the solution with most computer models is this low is going to be traveling to the east of us. It may throw a few showers back in our direction. It's going to keep a few more clouds around here. And so that's going to help to keep temperatures down ever so slightly tomorrow and Friday compared to today. And one or two of those showers then get ready because... <sighs> The heat's coming back for the weekend. 88 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies. And then we're going to top off today at 95, a storm or two, just one or two of them. Not as many as what we saw around here the past couple of days. Same thing tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Same thing Friday. Most of that rain is going to be off to the east. We'll have a couple of those wraparound showers, a couple of them on Saturday as well. Uh, but look at how, what temperatures do. And do you want me to tell you what I'm... Um, some models are saying after Tuesday. 
Well, Steph, I'm going to default to you on that question. Uh, we'll just wait. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. But it's going to be hot this weekend okay. and getting up upper 90s, and we'll have a lot of triple digits over toward the uh, Rio Grande. So. As the rain was falling yesterday, I was thinking about two different groups of folks, farmers and oh, ranchers yeah. around yeah. here, that had to be smiling last night. I'm sure. I mean, mm -hmm. we were. We don't even have to deal with that. Not a drought buster, but oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Uh, every little bit helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. All right, 10 till 5, about 71 degrees. Up next, Baymax is back in a new animated series, plus Chris Pratt becomes a Navy SEAL. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 919 Fireball 6. Your daily four numbers, 1865 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 3, 9, 20, 25, 33. And your Mega Million, 7, 12, 21, 43, 55, Mega Ball 11. Mega Player 2. Good luck. And welcome back at 453. As food prices soar, shopping experts say there are ways to save money at the supermarket. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, how to save at the grocery store as food prices soar. Eggs, eggs are gone up tremendously. Eggs are like five dollars a dozen. Did you buy any eggs today? Nope. One expert's price saving secrets. You want to use a hand basket instead of a large cart, you're likely to buy less on impulse when you use the basket. As she shares the best tips to save some extra cash. Save up to 50% off. You can find some serious savings in the bakery department by looking for discounted cakes or brownies, things that have been maybe a day or two old. These brownies my kids would love, $8 originally, on sale for two bucks. That's huge. Most people start in the fresh produce section, but you say sometimes the frozen aisle is better. I like to shop frozen vegetables, and you can usually save around 30% as well. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Coming up at 7 a.m., finding ways to save in places you never thought. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, Chris Pratt joins the Navy on Prime Video, plus a beloved Pixar character gets an animated series. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. That's not how it went down. Chris Pratt is a Navy SEAL on a mission in the new series, The Terminalist, debuting this week. You're along for the ride as he tries to figure out if some grand conspiracy killed his unit and his family, or is he just losing it? Director Antoine Fuqua telling me it's a story with which everyone can connect. Uh, empathy, uh, you know, uh, love, revenge, justice, there's certain things that don't change. And so for me, long as that, that was always the North Star. That's the thing that we all relate to. The Terminal List is out Friday on Amazon Prime Video. Hello, I am Baymax. Out today, Baymax is back. The lovable inflatable robot from the 2014 Marvel and Disney movie Big Hero 6 returns to star in his own animated series. When you said, ow. Scott Adsit returns as the voice of Baymax. With Maya Rudolph and more in the cast, you can find Baymax streaming on Disney+. Plus. If you have a new date for the next Ghostbusters film, you'll see the follow-up to Jason Reitman's 2021 Ghostbusters Afterlife around Christmas time, 2023. HBO confirms the season four of True Detective is coming, starring Jodie Foster. And happy birthday to Nicole Scherzinger. The Pussycat Dolls singer is 44 today, while comedian and actor Richard Lewis is 75. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 4.55 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead on Team USA, we'll get an update on what's being called the largest mass casualty event in San Antonio history. And one of the most popular vacation rental websites is cracking down on parties and events. Details coming up in Tech Bite. Checking the roads with Trans Guys, still looking good, especially if they're uh, locked in at 35 and 410. Steven is in studio. We'll check in with him coming up here at the top of the hour. We'll be back. You're watching GMSA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 71 degrees after a lot of rain for some people. Yeah, big showers and storms last night, and they hung around a little while, and that is great news. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 29th.
Thanks for joining us. Uh, definitely got rain. I know you did too. Yeah, it seemed like there were more numerous showers and storms yesterday compared to the day before. I agree. And it was kind of exciting because I would see the rain and then I was like, oh, it's going to leave quickly. But it, it didn't yeah. this time, Mike. And it, Dan, just I know a lot of folks, you get the KSAT weather app, open up the radar and watching these showers develop. And it's like just as it started and you look and yeah, more more were developing. A lot more folks did see rain. Not everybody saw rain yesterday, but where you did, boy, as we were they were just talking about there were some uh, pretty hefty downpours 71 degrees right now. So yesterday we stayed below normal at 91. Normal high is 93. Normal low is 74 right now. So we are below that. So that's a little bit of extra icing on top of the cake as well. Dew points at 69, which means that that bottom number there, which means there's a fair amount of uh, humidity out there. But a lot of that is because of the moisture in the ground. So not going to complain about this time since we did get that rain 95 for high temperature today. So it is going to be on the the warm side of things. And as far as rain chances today, eh, not as much. The aquifer uh, did drop down four tenths of a foot. Again, always emphasize check with your local municipality as far as any sort of uh, watering restrictions. Molds on the moderate side. Venture a guess that's going to be going up again because of the moisture in the ground. All right, who got how much? Take a look at this graph and as you you can see in and around Bear County up in parts of the hill country, but then primarily then down to the southeast was the the biggest chunk of the rain and officially at the airport just a third of an inch 0.34 to be exact. But then you know some spots inch inch and a half to three inches worth of rain and it was like we said definitely beautiful rain a couple of more showers today not as many partly cloudy skies then this morning 95 for a high temperature just one or two of them primarily down to the southeast now tomorrow and friday we're watching that low come in out of the Gulf of Mexico. We'll have a few more clouds around here, not completely cloudy skies, but we'll get some of that wrap around and a couple of more storms, uh, especially down to the southeast, low 90. So temperatures will be held down a stray shower to Saturday. Then, yep, we'll be getting hot again. Very hot for the 4th of July. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we have some flashing lights here at I-35 near FM 306. This is just a smidge north of New Braunfels, but thankfully we are just seeing some road work taking place. And in fact, hopefully those crews will be wrapping up. According to TxDOT, this should be finishing sometime after 5 this morning. So we got to give them plenty of time. Uh, this is in the south families of 35. If you're traveling in anywhere south of there, make sure that you plan ahead and give those those crews plenty of room, but for now, let's get a look at the map because nothing major to talk about just yet. A lot of those active construction spots, you know the drill. As long as it stays quiet, we'll continue to break those down for you, but it does look like a crash may have popped up somewhere between I-10 and 281. We'll take a look at that and find out how it impacts everybody's drive time. But for now, if your travels are going to take you right here to San Antonio, well, we are going to take out these travel times. 24 minutes on I-10 eastbound coming in from Bernie. It's going to be about 28 minutes on 281 southbound traveling in from Bulverde and as you travel as we just saw from that shot of trans guide doesn't look like that road work is really causing any delays from I 35 southbound heading into New Braunfels 26 minutes at this hour. But back here at trans guide looks like those crews may have just wrapped. So some good news. We'll have more updates on construction coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, our community continues to mourn and honor the loss of more than 50 migrants who died earlier this week. A number of vigils already taking place. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live right now. And Jonathan, what are people saying about this horrific incident? Stephanie, the San Antonio community members say the loss of more than 50 migrants who suffocated to death in a semi-trailer hits close to their hearts. Those community members in a vigil remembering the lives lost and praying for those still in recovery. They say the tragic end of the plight of migrants is happening way too common, and so are the thoughts and prayers. Now, at a vigil on Tuesday at Pearsall Park, more than 30 community members shared their grief and frustration. For some who share a similar plight, this is a trigger. I, I came here when I was 14 years old in an 18-wheeler as well, and I passed out from the heat. So this hits... I was lucky that I woke up. The mayor, council members, and county leaders were in attendance for the vigil, but uh, put on by SA Stands. Also last night, a prayer service at Last Chance Ministries. People came together to worship and pray, remembering the lives that were lost 
and praying for the families. Now the death toll in the human, uh, human smuggling tragedy rose twice yesterday. 51 lives have now been lost in what local officials are calling the largest mass casualty in San Antonio history. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And right now, it is believed that all those who died are adults. The Precinct 1 County Commissioner tells us that they have contacted the Mexican, Guatemalan, Honduran, and El Salvadorian consulates to help identify bodies as well as contact families in their home country. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf talked about the challenge the Bear County Medical Examiner now faces. 51 people dying here in Bear County as they come across the water. Our medical examiner, as Rebecca stated, has received all the bodies from Uvalde, and now she's facing this tremendous workload. And because of the number of bodies, the Bear County Medical Examiner has requested help from neighboring counties that could not give a timeline for how long it might take before all the victims are identified. However, once the medical examiner concludes its findings, the information will be given the person's home country's consulate. Mission Park Funeral Homes and Cemeteries here in San Antonio stepping in to help ensure the victims' families will be able to bury their loved ones. They say they will use their resources to help the Bear County Medical Examiner. It's just our way of participating to be able to help families in need, no matter where they come from. It's, it's, it's in our community, it happened in our community, and we have to take, take it head on right here in our community. Mission Park says it's working with the county and local officials will help with caskets and paperwork for the 51 victim victims. That is expected to be a quite lengthy process. Well, this morning, new details on new testimony during a last minute public hearing of the January 6th Select Committee. A former top aide to president, former president Trump, chief of staff, Mark, excuse me, a former top aide to former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, testified about a risk of violence on January 6. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. This morning, the January 6 committee's investigation thrust into a higher gear after the explosive testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson, a 26-year-old former aide to Trump White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows, as rioters stormed the Capitol chanting, Hang Mike Pence. Hutchinson recounting White House counsel Pat Cipollone, the president's top lawyer, pleading with chief of staff Mark Meadows to get former president Donald Trump to respond. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. And earlier, Hutchinson recalling Trump's anger that his Stop the Steel rally wasn't full, ordering the metal detectors be removed to allow more people in, some with weapons. I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. Hutchinson then telling the committee a story she heard secondhand from another White House aide, saying as Trump got into his presidential vehicle leaving the rally, he was told he could not go to the Capitol and erupted, lunging for the steering wheel and allegedly assaulting a Secret Service agent. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. The Secret Service saying they'd like to respond to this claim under oath, a source telling ABC News to expect the agents will refute the assault allegations. Trump responding with a flurry of posts on his social media app, claiming he hardly knew Hutchinson and calling her a phony. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 508, 71 degrees. And still ahead, why Airbnb is putting a stop to parties on its listings all across the world. Up next, uh, details on a big donation will help the community review Valdi rebuild following the school shooting there. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting at 71 degrees. We had some nice rain yesterday and some people might get a few sprinkles today. We'll be right back. 512 this morning, the grandmother, the, the grandmother rather, of the Uvalde school shooter is now out of University Hospital. Celia Martinez Gonzalez was shot before the shooter attacked Robb Elementary School where 19 students and two teachers died. 
The 66-year-old was discharged from the hospital yesterday. Gonzalez was shot in the face but was still able to call 911. A family member told the New York Post that the bullet went into her jaw next to her mouth and shattered her teeth. In a tweet, University Hospital wrote that she was in good condition. Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District is getting a $10 million donation last week. The city's mayor said Rob Elementary would be demolished. The large donation is coming from HEB and the Butt family. They gave the money to the school district's new nonprofit, the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation. The money will also go towards to build a new school and memorial park, which would be at the school's current site. It would also go to increase security at the new campus. Time now, 513 and 71 degrees for now. Up next, a first look at some new self-driving semi-trailer trucks that will deliver home goods for Wayfair. Plus, the makers of Pokemon Go are now making a new kind of basketball game with the NBA. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. Welcome back, 516. Airbnb permanently banning parties and events at all of its listings. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the party is permanently over at Airbnb properties. The party ban was put in place on Airbnb about six months into the pandemic, but now the company has made it permanent, saying it's been received positively by hosts. Violators can be suspended or even removed from the platform. Some of the home goods ordered from Wayfair will soon arrive on self-driving trucks. The deliveries by Waymo's autonomous tractor trailers are part of a pilot program getting underway this month in Texas. Each truck will operate on its own under the supervision of a driver and a software engineer. And the developer of Pokemon Go is creating an augmented reality game with the NBA. NBA All World will ask users to explore their neighborhoods to find stars like Steph Curry. Players will also be able to compete in mini games against virtual players. Those are your Tech Bites. 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven Cavazos. I didn't see any problems on Transguide. No, it's been really nice over here. I haven't had anything really to talk about, but let's get a look at the roadways because we know some people have to head out the door just like us. 35 North at Loop 410. We did have some road work that was finishing up earlier in the morning, but uh, looks like we're not really worried about that anymore because those flashing lights, crews that is, have already left uh, the area. But right now, 35 at US 90, the commute is just getting started, so keep that in mind. We're going to see more folks out there as the morning does pick up. But for now, let's just make sure that we plan ahead because what we see here on our map are a lot of those active construction zones. Here's another one we're going to add to our list at State Highway 151 over on the west side of San Antonio. Barrier removal. Now, this is going to be current, uh, but it should be wrapping up next Monday. That's already the 4th of July. 9 in the e or morning to 3 in the afternoon is when you can expect a single westbound main lane closure. That's from West Military Drive, all again, to Ingram Road, and that will be for barrier removal. But if you want to know what's in your area, grab those phones right now. If you have it already, good for you but open your camera app up. Don't take a selfie. Scan that QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. That has a list of the latest closures that are taking place in your area and, of course, anything else that will impact your drive time. Thank uh, you, Stephen. The word of the morning in the weather department could be thankful. Yes. yes. Cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks, I mean, yeah, beautiful sight. Just... It was great just to look out the window and see that rain yesterday and just I think my grass is even greener this morning after being so <laughs> brown from all the you know lack of rain. It's been forever and it's the most rain we've had around here. Uh, third of an inch officially most rain in more than a month that's officially out there at the airport. Of course, some folks picked up 
two, two and a half, three inches or even more than that with the uh, storms that moved through yesterday. So nothing out there right now. Most of the roads are fairly dry. There may be a couple of damp spots here and there. Here's the uh, satellite radar loop over the past 12 hours, and uh, it's just great to see those uh, showers move on through. Of course, that the, the chunk of the rain was pretty much from, say, Kerrville, Sisterdale, back down to the southeast through San Antonio, and then down there around, uh, say, Carn City, where most of the rain fell. And obviously, once the sun went down, it started to uh, die down then a little bit. All right. As far as the rest of today, we are on the cooler side. Believe it or not, we're below normal like yesterday afternoon. We stayed at 91 degrees right before those showers and thunderstorms started to pop up. So a couple of degrees below normal, and that's where we are this morning, two, three degrees below normal. We'll work our way up through the 70s in through the mid 80s late morning. More sunshine. I think we'll see more sunshine today than what we saw yesterday, although there will be just one or two, you know, stray thunderstorms out there, primarily down to the southeast. We are going to be hotter than yesterday as well well up to 95 degrees so just about a normal high temperature here's the uh, computer model for this afternoon again one or two showers popping up mainly down to the uh, southeast they'll start to die down once the the sun goes down then we go into thursday and friday and again this is the low that's developing down there in the gulf of mexico this there was some controversy with some computer models yesterday, but everything's pretty much in agreement. This stays well to the east of us, although we will see some clouds being thrown on in here. A few more that's going to be tomorrow as well as on Friday and still a, a couple of showers, even a couple of thunderstorms hanging around here going into uh, tomorrow as well as Friday, maybe one or two of them on Saturday. Here's a different computer model, longer range one, and this again shows the rain primarily staying off to the east of us. A couple of those showers wrap around on Friday. This one even has a few of them on Saturday. Then we get into the rest of the week, and that's going to, or the rest of the weekend, I should say, and things are really going to start to heat up. Now, that's in the Gulf of Mexico. Further down in the, uh, well, just east of the Windward Islands there of the Antilles, we've got this disturbance right there and Hurricane Center is kind of flagging that one saying it's probably going to uh, develop into something over the next couple of days. Probably tropical storm uh, would be the next name would be Bonnie on the list. 88 degrees today, partly cloudy skies at noon and then a high temperature today makes it up to 95. Still a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly down to the southeast later on today. Then we go into tomorrow. A few more clouds. Same thing on Friday. Again, one or two of those showers, a thunderstorm, mainly to the southeast. A couple of them are possible on Saturday. Not very likely. I think we hit our best chance of rain yesterday, but then look at how temperatures heat up. Mid 90s again on Saturday, upper 90s. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's going to be hot for the 4th of July. Well, again, to soak in yesterday, I kept walking outside to smell the rain, yes. to listen, to and watch. Enjoy it, right? <laughs> yeah, it was quite the event. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 522, 71 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at Ron Howard's youth thriller, and the Motion Picture Academy gives out some special invitations. Some movie news now from a fact-based thriller to the latest film folks invited to vote for the Oscars. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Twelve boys and their coach are trapped in the flooded cave. Hello? Hey. They're here. How many of you? Thirteen. Thirteen? They're all alive. Uh, can we go out now? Here's your first look at 13 Lives, based on the real-life rescue of a boy's soccer team trapped in a dangerous cave in Thailand. Viggo Mortensen, Colin Farrell, and Joel Edgerton star in the drama directed by Ron Howard, which opens in select theaters on July 29th and on Prime Video August 5th. But yeah, I'm super happy. I Oscar winners Billie Eilish and Phineas O'Connell are among the 397 artists and executives invited to join the Motion Picture Academy. Also on this year's list, fellow Oscar winners Ariana DeBose from West Side Story and Troy Kotzer from CODA, Belfast actors Jamie Dornan and Katrina Balfe, In the Heights actress Olga Meredith, CODA screenwriter and director Sean Hader, and film critic and historian Leonard Maltin. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Quite the list.
time now, 526 and 71 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA at this point, most states are somehow engaged in abortion, abortion debates or battles, and the federal government is weighing in too. We'll get an update on where the procedures are restricted, protected, or are in limbo. And if you're planning a trip for the upcoming July 4th weekend, you are not going to be alone. We're going to tell you what days are expected to be the busiest on the roadways. And a special pet is looking for new home. We'll check in with our friends at the Animal Defense League just ahead. And are you looking to get ahead at work? Ahead on GMSA at 6, some simple things you can do that could help you get promoted. Making headlines this morning, the abortion debate continues as more states move to establish restrictions across several states. And we got a nice break yesterday with all that rain. This morning we are starting at 71 degrees. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Normally it seems like we're about 8 degrees warmer than that. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the rain. I know we did. Oh, it was amazing last night. Mike, did any showers wind up lingering into the overnight hours? Didn't see any leftover last night. Also, another benefit from the rain. What do you see in this picture? Clear skies? Clear lens. Oh, clear oh, lens. Oh, finally got yeah. a camera lens out there at the airport is finally nice. washed off. So we'll see when the sun comes up what it looks like, especially. But yes, yeah, so a much good, better picture there. And you can see uh, we do have a lot of clear skies right now with a few of the stars and planets in the uh, the background. So yeah, finally, that thing got cleaned up. Uh, 71 degrees right now, so we are below normal. We were below normal yesterday, believe it or not, for the first time in the month of June. Had a below normal high temperature of 91. The dew points at 69, a fair amount of humidity, and a lot of that, that number is actually up from yesterday. And a lot of that is, of course, due to the moisture in the ground, which is not a bad thing. Not going to complain about it this time around. Temperature right now, 66 in comfort. Bernie stage, 71 at the airport. So, yeah, all these numbers are down quite nicely and dew point temperatures, some low 70s down to the south, but it's uh, fairly comfortable out there in uh, parts of the hill country. 58 for dew point right now and comfort below that kind of threshold line. Mold is on the moderate side and I have a uh, just a guess on my part that it is going to be going up later on today because of that extra moisture around here. It's going to be hot. It's going to be up to about normal or then some 95 for high temperature today. And yeah, one or two showers or a thunderstorm going to be popping up just about a you know, 20% chance here or there. Not as widespread, unfortunately, as what we had yesterday. And most of that is going to be down to the uh, southeast. Still a couple of rain chances in the next few days. Then we'll take a look ahead to the long 4th of July weekend. It's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Oh, well, let's take a look. 281 at Grayson, I-35 at FM 482. We really haven't had a whole lot to talk about this early in the morning, but that's okay because anybody that does have to head out in the next few moments is going to enjoy their travels to wherever they need to be. But right now, 35 at Loop 410 looks like it's getting just a tad bit busier. Uh, but keep in mind, as long as it stays quiet, we'll talk some of these construction spots. But for now, uh, no major issues to report. But we do want to make sure you check your vehicle for anybody that has to travel this early or maybe into the weekend. Make sure everything is working properly. We do have our first stall that we're reporting this morning off State Highway 151 in the westbound lanes, not far from Wiseman Boulevard. This is over near the northwest side of San Antonio, so you have to make sure your vehicles are working properly. And anytime you see those uh, stranded vehicles, make sure that you move over or slow down. That is the law. But let's go ahead and just jump back to Trans Guide here. 410 at Culebra. The morning is moving. No issues to report just yet, but we'll continue to watch things closely. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Now to some late breaking news, some scary moments for one man have a whole neighborhood talking right now. San Antonio police still searching that neighborhood for one of the people responsible for it all, a carjacker. Katrina Weber is live on the southwest side at Warhorse and War Cloud Drives. And Katrina, it sounds like this started with a carjacking, but led to more. Well, definitely a lot more in this neighborhood, a lot of damage here. Let me just give you a look at what uh, what happened. As police say, the carjacker was trying to get away from him. The car went right through uh, a neighbor's fence here, hit a fire hydrant, taking that out, and then ended up in someone's driveway where it actually hit another parked car that was on the street and then ended up in the driveway. Now, this started about 3.15 this morning with a carjacking several miles away from here. Police say that a man was trying to get into his apartment complex, waiting for the gate to open when two people walked up with guns, stole his SUV from him, and then took off. 
Sometime later, police spotted that stolen car and uh, that the drivers realized police were on their tail. So they took off. They ended up in this neighborhood again, about six miles from where this all started. This is where they did all the damage. Uh, again, took out a fence, took out a fire hydrant, knocked into a parked car and then ended up in someone's driveway. Police say that one of those people they were able to take into custody right away, but the other one took off and ran off into a wooded area here. And that's where they had been searching. Now during the search, they say one their canine got a little bit uh, excited and nipped the officer that was handling him. That officer is just fine. No one else injured, but uh, quite a bit of confusion that has neighbors up at what, five o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, uh, all talking about it, wondering what is going on as police uh, try to wrap up this scene and then also uh, continue to search for that one person who was involved in the carjacking, as they believe. Reporting live on the Southwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Well, most states right now engaged in abortion debates. CNN's Amy Kiley has the latest on where abortions are banned, restricted, protected, or in limbo. So there's a big legal battle coming. More and more states are rushing to protect or restrict access to abortions. Attorneys general in these states say they want to maintain or expand access. We have filed a lawsuit uh, that asks the courts to clarify that Wisconsin's 19th century abortion ban is not in effect. The governors of Nevada and California are using executive orders to protect people seeking the procedures. These states are poised to go the other way with restrictions or bans. Such laws are in limbo in Louisiana and Utah. They're already in place in these areas. This decision returns abortion policy to the place it has always belonged to the elected policy branches of government. Today in Cincinnati, the city council is voting on adding elective abortions to the city employee health care plan. At the federal level, some Republicans are still taking victory laps and taking credit. Landmark decisions made possible by the effort that I and others made to transform the judiciary. The Biden administration is entering the fray, too. It's pledging to protect patient privacy and expand access to medication abortion. Under federal law, patients have rights to privacy. Uh, they have rights to access to certain types of care. We're going to see, I believe, a spate of lawsuits with DOJ trying to strike down state laws that reach into other states. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. In India, at least 17 people are dead after a building collapsed in Mumbai. Officials there say only about 10 people survived the collapse late Monday. There are no longer reports of any missing people. The cause for the collapse has not yet been confirmed. And Wall Street is hoping to recover today after stocks closed in the red yesterday. Earlier in the day, equities gained value on the news that COVID conditions were improving and that China supply chain constraints were easing. But then the conference board reported that the Consumer Confidence Index fell to 98.7, down from 103.2. The research group also reported it is forecasting inflation to hit 8% this month, which would be the highest level since August of 1987. Investors began selling and sent the markets into losing territory for the day. A 34-year-old Colorado man is recovering after he was gored by a bison at Yellowstone National Park Monday. According to park officials, he was walking on a boardwalk with his family near the Old Faithful Geyser. The group reportedly did not leave the area when a bison charged at them. The bison continued to charge and gored the man, causing injury to his arm. He was taken to a hospital. Park officials say the matter is under investigation. But language and a press release suggest the man was too close to the bison. They reminded visitors to stay more than 25 yards away from wildlife. And time now, 538 and 70 degrees for now. Up next, some important things you may have forgotten when it comes to keeping your pets safe during the upcoming Independence Day celebrations. And a quick look outside with live cam. We are now at 70 degrees, a little refreshing compared to the other mornings we've had. We'll be right back. 541. Welcome back and good morning. Fourth of July, of course, right around the corner. It's always a big day for barbecues and fun. But as you enjoy the holiday weekend, CNN's Brett Conway has some ways to make sure you take care of your pets who might not be as excited about it as you are. 
If you're planning on hosting a backyard barbecue this 4th, or maybe you live in a neighborhood that's known for setting off fireworks, Best Friends Animal Society, a national animal welfare organization, has a few tips to keep your furry family members safe. First, make sure you bring your animals inside when those fireworks start going off. Put them in a secure room with some comforting toys. Maybe put on the TV or play some music to help drown out the sound from outside. Consider a thunder shirt. It applies gentle pressure around a pet's torso. It can help with anxiety and stress. And if you're going to give them medication, make sure it's prescribed by a vet and pay attention to the dosage. Do not play with things like sparklers around your pets. Not only could they get burned, they're toxic if ingested. Always keep alcohol and other harmful human foods out of reach of your pets. Before the festivities even begin, double check that your pet is wearing a collar and identification tags with your contact information in case they get out. And finally, if Fido does get out, make sure you have a plan in place that includes using social media and checking local shelters to find them. Being prepared this holiday weekend can go a long way in making sure everyone in your family has a good time. For today's Health Minute, I'm Britt Conway. Hopefully your pets are already microchipped, which is great insurance. Yes, definitely. Time now, 543 and 70 degrees for now. Up next, Animal Defense League here with a pet that like to, would like to go home with you this morning. Well, if you are looking for just an overabundance of energy, Julie has got the answer. Who is this little baby here? So. This cutie pie is named Susie. I want to call her Susie Q, but if you look for her on campus, it's Susie with a Z. Okay. She's only six months old. She is a pointer terrier mix, and she's awesome. And look at how, I mean, she's not a hyper dog. She's just got a lot of energy. Um, and you said with pointer in there, she's going to be easily trained. She is really, yeah. I think, going Hi. to be very easily Hi, trained. We spent time with her yesterday and she's a pleaser. Yeah. Yeah. And she's a submissive dog. Um, she wants to make you happy. If you give her attention, she is just going to be in your hip pocket. If you want a running partner, this is the yes. dog. Kids in the backyard with a tennis ball. As I say, everybody's going to sleep well at night. So. Yes, and she's an excellent okay. splooter. We're doing the side lay right now, but she can do the doggy splits as well. So <laughs> she's a good, good girl. Just make yourself at home. So yeah. what y'all got going on? Well, um, right now with the heat, we are wanting to let the community know about um, how to best care for their pet. Um, you know, it's hot, hot. You know that better yeah. than anybody, Mike. So um, with us getting into triple digit temperatures, we want to be really aware of looking for signs of heat exhaustion in your pet. Um, we always advocate for keeping pets indoors. Mm -hmm. That's the best. But um, they, it's a, a state law that they cannot be tethered and they must always have access to water. Okay. Um, but really keep your pets indoors. And then um, if you do, signs uh, that your pet is suffering from heat exhaustion are, um, are gonna be panting, of course, we all know that, but also a dry nose and excessive drooling and then vomiting. Okay. Yeah, if it's hot and they're vomiting, you're in trouble. And the other thing, uh, as far as fresh water, make sure you change it often because even a, in a plastic bowl, it's gonna heat up very, very quickly. And don't forget about taking them for a walk. If you can't walk on the pavement barefoot, right. neither can they. Right. It's 40 okay. to 6 degrees hotter on the pavement than the outdoor temperature. All right. And in your morning consumer headlines, more than half of U.S. workers are now working from home at least part-time. According to the management consulting company McKinsey, 58% of Americans reported having the opportunity to work from home at least one day a week, and 35% of workers have the option of working from home five days a week. That equates to 92 million workers in all kinds of jobs from every part of the country. Now, McKinsey says the survey shows flexible work is no longer a temporary pandemic response, and when people have the chance for flexible work, 87% of them will take it. A record number of Americans are expected to hit the roads this holiday weekend. That's according to the annual 4th of July travel forecast from AAA. The Automotive Group is predicting 42 million Americans will take a road trip of 50 miles or more. For the 4th of July holiday weekend it comes as gas prices hit record highs earlier this month. Travel experts predict travel times could double for some drivers on Thursday and Friday evening. The report also found the number of Americans flying is lower than usual this year. AAA predicts the number of airline passengers will be the lowest since 2011. Hundreds of flights have already been canceled in recent days, mostly due to staffing issues and weather.
and here at home we have some problems on Highway 281 and Grayson. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven. Yeah, we're seeing at least two lanes blocked here. Unfortunately, we are reporting our first crash of the morning and you can see already a pretty heavy first responder presence out there. Not sure how many vehicles are involved at this time or if anyone experienced any injuries. As always, we hope everybody's okay, but right now this is going to cause an issue for anyone traveling in the northbound lanes of 281. You can see again, two lanes of traffic blocked off at this time. Not a great shot, unfortunately, because it is still very dark, so we really can't make out how many first responders are out there, but we can see that it's causing an issue in those northbound lanes not far from Grayson Street. We're going to have to watch that area closely as the morning does roll on, but make sure that you are watching out for those first responders. We'll look for some alternative routes in the next few minutes, but over here on the west side, we still have this uh, stall reported at State Highway 151 westbound, not far from Wiseman Boulevard, so as a reminder, for those travel plans, make sure you check your vehicle. Now, let's get a wide look at the map. Thankfully, nothing else major to report at this time. Just a lot of those active construction spots, but the big issue is going to be right here at 281 at Grayson. We'll see how that changes as the morning does go on, but not looking good as we're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike has photographic proof of the thunderstorms we had in the area last night. Yes, indeed. A lot of folks are taking a lot of pictures of the beautiful rain and yes, uh, some of the lightning strikes. And if you are ever inclined to take pictures of lightning, do it inside. Don't stand even on your front porch. It is extremely dangerous outside, of course, but uh, yeah, it makes for some great pictures if you can catch it. And uh, notice that uh, beautiful rain shaft kind of associated with that, that lightning strike right there. So thank you very much for the Acacia Connect picture. Starting to see the glow of the morning sunrise and it's even prettier given the fact that there's so much moisture in the ground. Obviously, we do have a lot of clear skies out there as of right now. And once again, rainfall totals, you know, a few scattered showers out in portions of the hill country. Obviously, the coverage was a lot more widespread yesterday than the previous day, and most of it from about Kerrville, that line going in toward Beeville and over toward Victoria. And those yellow spots were some of the heavier downpours. And again, this is just an estimate on radar, um, almost well, just more than three inches of rain down in there toward Carn uh, City and Wilson County, just over three inches of rain, Pleasanton about an inch, and then anywhere from an inch uh, to three inches of rain heading in toward portions of the hill country, officially out at the airport. And again, there is this spot right there, 35 um, in toward, well, not even toward Converse necessarily on the northeast side of town and a couple of miles over, only a third of an inch officially out there at the airport. Same thing on the uh, southwest side of town, three inches of rain and then downtown, maybe not quite as much over toward uh, can or excuse me, Medina Lake, um, anywhere about two, one, two inches of rain. So yeah, it was very, very nice. Obviously, we will see some more rain today. Not as much, not as widespread, just about a 20% chance for some rain. Temperatures are in the low 70s right now. It's kind of pleasant up except for the humidity and that's obviously the moisture coming in here uh, with all the moisture in the ground 85 at noon 88 at noon excuse me 85 at 11 88 at noon and we are going to be getting up into the mid 90s today so yesterday we stayed in the low 90s warmer today more sunshine and again a 20% chance for a stray shower or thunderstorm, mainly down to the uh, southeast later on today which is what a lot of the computer models are depicting there along the coastal plain, a couple of uh, wraparound showers. Tomorrow we will have perhaps a little bit better chance for some rain. A few more clouds around here. This disturbance coming in out of the Gulf of Mexico is going to stay to the east of us. We get again some of the wraparound moisture, some more clouds hanging around here tomorrow as well as on Friday. A couple of stray showers here and there, but the majority of that rain will stay well off to the east of us. Saturday, um, a couple of showers are possible here. Again, these long range models tend to you know paint with a broad brush, but just one or two of them. Then after that, faucets get turned off. Forget about it. We are going to be seeing a lot of sunshine and really heating up. Saturday is going to be like today as far as temperatures, mid 90s, and then add to that going into Sunday as well as the fourth. 88 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies and 95 high temperature. So it's going to be hot and humidity with the moisture in the ground. You definitely feel every bit of that 95. One or two of those stray thunderstorms primarily to the southeast tomorrow and Friday. A few more clouds around here and yeah, I've got the little graphic on there for the rain, just about a 20% chance. So rain chances are definitely going to be going down one or two of them out there. And then temperature is definitely going up Sunday, Monday and next week and just in time for July. 
yeah, mm -hmm. probably going to be adding another digits to some of those high temperatures. Darn it. Ouch. Turns out Mother Nature does own a calendar. <laughs> Darn it. Too right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. 554, about 70 degrees at San Antonio International. Let's look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick three, 919, Fireball six, Daily four, 1865, Fireball three. Cash five numbers, 3920, 2533. And Mega Million 7, 12, 21, 43, 55, Mega Ball 11, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA on a Wednesday, the fallout from that bombshell testimony in front of the January 6th committee. The former top White House aide's stunning claims about former President Trump's actions that day. And the family of one of the Americans captured in Ukraine is speaking out this morning. What they know about his condition. And our series, helping you find the positive and the negative. Today, we show you how to turn fear into a strength. And so much more on Good Morning America. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, new details on the migrant tragedy right here in San Antonio. We're tracking the latest developments this morning. And Stephen is tracking the latest developments on the highway, including this incident right now that's got a couple lanes closed down. 281 at Grayson. You see SAPD is on the scene and the flare line is out. We'll check in with Stephen coming up here at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto, the San Antonio community, remembering the lives lost in the human smuggling tragedy. Coming up on GMSA, we'll have the latest. And taking a look outside with wow. live cam. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful out there. Very nice for our Wednesday morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. That sunrise is a bit of a showstopper this morning. Good morning to you. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, June 29th. Yeah, it's beautiful outside, and it was beautiful yesterday with all that rain we had. A whole bunch of folks got some very uh, good rain yesterday. Showers and storms, and this morning they have moved out, Mike. Yeah, but we will still see a couple more later on this afternoon. Not as many as yesterday. Okay. Rain chances are really, really small. At least the chance is going to be there even through Friday and Saturday albeit very small and primarily just limited down to the southeast. But yeah, I think what makes that picture even prettier is the fact that we did get a lot of beautiful rain yesterday, officially out there at the airport and the airport's just right over there. Uh, third of an inch. However, go a little bit further off to the northeast and picked up almost three inches of rain out there around uh, 35 in between uh, 410 and 1604. Right now, 70 at the airport. So we have uh, dropped down a little bit. Same thing, Kelly. And then over there toward Randolph Stinson at 72 degrees. Again, most of the clear skies. Moles on the moderate side. Have a feeling that may go up a bit, just given the fact we do have all that moisture in the ground. And as far as temperatures, we will be right around 70 this morning. Wind's going to start to uh, be on the well, kind of breezy side today. Northeasterly 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll make it up through the 80s at uh, throughout the morning hours, 88 at noon, and then make it into the mid 90s. Yesterday we stayed at 91 degrees, so we were below normal for the first time in forever, it seems like, and then up closer to a normal, actually slightly above that for a high temperature later on today. Again, one or two of those stray showers or a thunderstorm primarily to the southeast. We still, as I mentioned, keep the rain chances sticking around here for the next couple of days, then the long, I almost said Labor Day, <laughs> can't jump ahead. Fourth of July weekend, and it is going to be living up to uh, what you usually think of Fourth of July. It's going to be hotter than a firecracker. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? 281 at Grayson. This is not far from the Pearl. Let's get a look at Trans Guide. Unfortunately, the situation has not improved in the last few minutes. We now see that line of road flares, as Mark pointed out a little bit earlier, but now we are getting a closer look, and you can see off in the left shoulder lane there, we do have at least one vehicle. So uh, right now, we do see plenty of flashing lights out their first responders are working to clear this up and we want to make sure that we give them plenty of room, but we can see at least at this point traffic is getting by with at least one lane. Now I'm not really looking at any uh, major slowdowns just yet here in the northbound lanes, not far from Grayson, but we'll look at those alternative routes, but I don't think you're really going to need that at this point. But if this crash lingers around a little bit longer, you know, when more people get out there, we'll start to see more red and yellow build up on those lanes. So make sure that you watch out anytime you see those flashing lights. Let's get a wide look 
look at the map and show you the metro area right now. Thankfully, nothing else is going on. This is going to be the major talking point, at least for now. And as we take a look at those travel times, no worry here either. 28 minutes if you're heading in from 37 northbound in Pleasanton. About half an hour, the usual drive time on Highway 90 coming in those eastbound lanes from Castroville, and about a 17 minute drive time coming in from 35 northbound and Lytle. So no worries there, but really we want you to be alert about what's going on here at 281 at Grayson, not far from the Pearl. So give those first responders plenty of room. If we see this crash still there in the next few minutes, we'll have some updated routes for you coming up in the next few minutes here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Developing right now, San Antonio police say they're trying to find one of the people who created a big mess in a southwest side neighborhood. They believe that person stole an SUV at gunpoint, then crashed it, causing a lot of damage. Katrina Weber is live in the middle of it all at War Horse and War Cloud Drives. Katrina, good morning. Was anyone hurt? Well, good morning. Uh, we did have an officer with some minor injuries that was sort of a sidebar to this whole thing, a minor dog bite. Also, the owner of the SUV that was stolen at gunpoint is obviously a bit uh, shaken up. He showed up here to identify his vehicle and also take some of the uh, the the property out of it. But uh, again, you can see a big mess here. We had two damaged cars as well as a fence and a fire hydrant that were taken out. And if you take a look at the video, you can see a little bit better of what happened. And I can explain better what happened. The police say that they had tracked an SUV that was stolen several miles away from here uh, again at gunpoint. Uh, the people inside drove into this neighborhood where they crashed through a backyard fence, took out a fire hydrant, hit a parked car, and then left the vehicle right in someone's driveway. Those two people uh, tried to get away. One of them was captured by police still at the car. The other person ran off into the woods, and police had quite an extensive search going on for that person. They had the helicopter up. They brought out their canine, and police say the dog got excited and accidentally uh, bit the, the handler, just causing a minor injury. That officer was checked out by EMS here at the scene, but he is okay. Uh, the person who took off running is the one who police are still looking for, and uh, they have not found him so far. He did go off into a wooded area in this neighborhood, and they were unable to track him down. But again, a big mess in this neighborhood. We've got a homeowner who now has to fix the fence, and then the owner of the SUV that was originally stolen in this situation. Also, uh, that car has quite a bit of damage, uh, so I, I'm assuming he will either have to fix it or find another vehicle, all as a result of this carjacking that happened this morning. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will be holding a press conference in Eagle Pass to give a border security update. He will be joined by the director of DPS. This comes as we learn more about the migrant tragedy here in San Antonio. We're learning charges have been filed. Juan Francisca de Luna Bilbao and Juan Claudio de Luna Mendez were arrested Monday night at a home here in San Antonio. An address was listed on the registration for the tractor trailer carrying the migrants. Both men are charged with possession of a weapon by an alien illegally in the United States. Federal investigators have not been clear on whether smuggling charges will be filed or even if the men were involved. A third suspect, the alleged driver of the tractor trailer, was found in a field with some of the survivors. His name has not been released. It's not clear right now whether he will be charged. Meanwhile, our community continues to mourn and honor the loss of those migrants. A number of vigils are already taking place. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, what are people saying about this horrific incident? Stephanie, the San Antonio community, community members say the loss of more than 50 migrants who suffocated to death in a semi-trailer hits close to their hearts. Now those community members in a vigil, remembering the lives lost and praying for those still in recovery. They say the tragic to end of the plight of migrants is something that's happening way too often. And so are the thoughts and prayers. At a vigil on Tuesday at Pearsall Park, more than 30 community members shared their grief and frustration. For some who share a similar plight, this is a trigger. I, I came here when I was 14 years old in an 18 wheeler as well. And I passed out from the heat. So this hits. <laughs> I was lucky that I woke up. The mayor, council members, and county leaders were in attendance for the vigil put on by SA Stands. Also last night, a prayer service at Last Chance Ministries. People came together to worship and pray 
remembering the lives that were lost and praying for the families. Now, the death toll in the human smuggling uh, tragedy rose twice yesterday. 51 lives have now been lost in what local officials are calling the largest mass casualty in San Antonio history. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And Mission Park Funeral Homes and Cemeteries stepping in to help ensure the victims' families will be able to bury their loved ones. It will use its resources to help the Bear County Medical Examiner. Mission Park says it is working with county and local officials that will help with caskets and paperwork for the 51 victims, which is expected to be a lengthy process. Pope Francis also responding to the tragedy here in San Antonio. He wants everyone to pray together in a tweet. The Pope said in part, quote, may the Lord open our hearts so these misfortunes never happen again, end quote. You can read the Pope's full statement on KSAT.com. And this is a story we are following closely on air and on our website, KSAT.com right now. One of the survivors found in that tractor trailer is now able to speak. She's worried about her missing brother. You can read more about this story on our homepage. Now to a silver alert you might see on Transguide this morning, the Alice Police Department, west of Corpus Christi, searching for Mario Marroquin. He is 80 years old and is diagnosed with a cognitive impairment. He was last seen in Alice on Sunday driving a white 2020 Subaru with a Texas license plate of LKF2DV. If you have any information about where he might be, call the Alice to Police Department. It's in that kind of orange yellow banner at the bottom of your screen, 361-664-0186. And time now, 609 and 70 degrees for now. Well, good news if you need to do some grocery shopping this morning. Still to come, what shopping experts are saying about ways to save. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. And taking a look outside with live cam. It's looking beautiful out there right now. Step outside and enjoy this nice morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back 613 this morning. New details on testimony during a last minute public hearing of the January 6th committee. A former top aide to former chief of staff Mark Meadows testified about a risk of violence on January 6th. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. This morning, the January 6th committee's investigation thrust into a higher gear after the explosive testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson, a 26-year-old former aide to Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. As rioters stormed the Capitol chanting, Hang Mike Pence. Hutchinson recounting White House counsel Pat Cipollone, the president's top lawyer, pleading with Chief of Staff Mark Meadows to get former President Donald Trump to respond. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. And earlier, Hutchinson recalling Trump's anger that his Stop the Steel rally wasn't full, ordering the metal detectors be removed to allow more people in, some with weapons. I overheard the president say something to the effect of, you know, I, I don't effing care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Take the effing mags away. Let my people in. Hutchinson then telling the committee a story she heard secondhand from another White House aide, saying as Trump got into his presidential vehicle leaving the rally, he was told he could not go to the Capitol and erupted, lunging for the steering wheel and allegedly assaulting a Secret Service agent. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. The Secret Service saying they'd like to respond to this claim under oath, a source telling ABC News to expect the agents will refute the assault allegations. Trump responding with a flurry of posts on his social media app, claiming he hardly knew Hutchinson and calling her a phony. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. It's now 6.15 on your Wednesday morning.
go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos to see how things are on Highway 281. Not any better. All right, 281 at Grayson. Let's get a look at what we are seeing from Trans Guide. You can see traffic down to just one lane right now. This is not far from the Pearl Brewery. We can actually see that uh, we have a wrecker out there, or a tow truck, I should say, working to clear things up. So hopefully, before the show wraps up, we'll have a better update here in these northbound lanes. But right now, I'm not thinking we're going to need those alternative routes just yet because we're seeing a little bit of a buildup, but it's nothing too bad. So just keep that in mind. If you have to head in the area, drive up north of 281, you'll encounter those flashing lights. So just be prepared to slow down for a little bit. Let's go ahead and now give you that wide look because thankfully not much else has changed here either. Just again, a lot of those active construction spots. Here's one that we want drivers to be aware of off State Highway 123 in Guadalupe County. Striping operations. We mentioned this to you earlier in the week. Uh, this will be wrapping up on Friday, July 1st, but that will start at 8 in the morning, wrap around 530 in the afternoon. But as we all know, those crews tend to get out there a little bit earlier, so prepare for that. And you can also expect single lane closures in both directions from Angel Lane to FM 477. So make sure that you have your phones also because we're going to bring up those QR codes for you. Tap the center of your screen on your camera app and you'll be able to be taken to the uh, traffic page that has a list of the latest closures that are taking place in your area and anything else that should impact your drive time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Mike Osterhage says yes. good morning to a beautiful sunrise. Yeah, it's just gorgeous out there. I mean, we've got a couple of clouds way off in the distance, but just very, very pretty. And temperatures are some of the lowest low temperatures we've seen in, it seems like forever, some 60s in parts of the Hill Country, 70 here in town. That's four degrees below normal and uh, dew points at 68. So there is some moisture out there thanks to the moisture in the ground. So I don't think we can can complain about this one instead of just having that humidity in the air. At least at least the rain came and did some good. So uh, take a look at speaking of rain. It was beautiful, not only seeing the uh, showers, but also lightning lighting up the sky as well. Mr. McClellan over there by uh, Woodlawn Lake. Yeah, great looking shot. Thank you very much for that. Another picture of the gorgeous sunrise. Oh my goodness, that is pretty. All right, looking back so far, because we're almost obviously at the end of the month of June, every day in the month of June, except for yesterday, has been above normal for high temperatures. And 17 of those days, and going back to Monday, we've hit uh, triple digit readings, the most ever in the month of June. And the average temperature is uh, about five and a half degrees above normal. Of course, the hottest was on um, when we hit 105 a couple of weeks ago. And tomorrow we are projecting that we're going to be back above normal and then slightly below normal at or below normal on uh, Thursday. But yeah, every day except for yesterday, Today. We've been above normal in the month of June. So temperature is going to be warming up quickly this morning. We are going to make it up to 77 at 9 o'clock and then already up to 88 at noon. It's a bit more humidity out there this afternoon again because of the moisture in the ground. And so you're going to feel every bit of that 95 and then some. We will have a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly to the southeast later on today. So it's not going to be anywhere near as widespread as what we had around here yesterday, which again, looking back at the uh, satellite and radar loop over the past 12 hours, it was so gorgeous to see those showers and storms developing. And then obviously once the sun went down, they started to uh, come to an end. Now down in the Gulf of Mexico, we're watching this low right about in there. You can see that uh, counterclockwise rotation. That's going to be working its way up sort of in our direction, but everything is now pretty much in agreement that that is going to be staying to the east of us. Here's what it looks like later on today. Again, just this is the computer model that the past couple of days has done a pretty good job depicting afternoon showers and storms and not showing too many. Most everything down to the uh, southeast. And again, that's going to be later on this afternoon. And then going into tomorrow, we'll have a couple of them primarily down to the southeast. And here's that low working its way up in toward Houston, a few wraparound showers, a couple of more clouds being thrown off to the west as well. So we'll have a few more clouds tomorrow as well as on Friday. And then even though we'll still have a couple of showers hanging around here on Saturday, we start to warm back up and then really start to heat up 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature is going to make it up to 95. One or two showers, a couple of thunderstorms, mainly down to the southeast again, nowhere near like what we had around here yesterday. Tomorrow and Friday, a few more clouds around and then temperatures will stay right about normal. So at least we're going to be starting the month of July. Normal, <laughs> basically the one day. 
and then we heat up. So it's going to be mid and upper 90s uh, as we go in toward the weekend. A couple of showers here or there tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Don't count them a lot. And then upper 90s and probably looking at some triple digits again next week. Well, it's been a great week so far, hasn't it? Nice it break all the been. way around. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we've been enjoying this so far. Soaking it in, yeah. Yeah. Literally, literally and figuratively. I'm sure yeah. the ground is dry right now because it's been, you know, the rain got soaked in so quickly. Oh, and right. remember before I went on vacation, I was worried about my CPS bill. I got the the one for when oh, we've been. Uh -huh. yeah. It was bad. It was as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. Oh, good. That's no, good. No second mortgage required. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> 621, about 70 degrees. And we all know the price of groceries has gone up. After the break, some saving secrets you may not know about. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, how to save at the grocery store as food prices soar. Eggs, eggs are gone up tremendously. Eggs are like $5 a dozen a month. Did you buy any eggs today? Nope. One expert's price-saving secrets. You want to use a hand basket instead of a large cart, you're likely to buy less on impulse when you use the basket. As she shares the best tips to save some extra cash. Save up to 50% off. You can find some serious savings in the bakery department by looking for discounted cakes or brownies, things that have been maybe a day or two old. These brownies my kids would love, $8 originally, on sale for two bucks. That's huge. Most people start in the fresh produce section, but you say sometimes the frozen aisle is better. I like to shop frozen vegetables, and you can usually save around 30% as well. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Coming up at 7 a.m., finding ways to save in places you never thought. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Los Angeles. The first group of Fort Bragg soldiers that deployed to Poland and Germany in February this year have returned home. Members of the 82nd Airborne Division were deployed to bolster NATO just after Russia invaded Ukraine. The soldiers say it is good to be home. And history will be made at the Men's World Cup in Qatar later this year. Three women will referee those games. Japanese referee Yoshimi Yamashita says she feels the pressure, but says she is also really happy. The two other women are from France and Rwanda. Time check, 626, about 70 degrees outside. And our next half hour, Chef Javier Salazar reaching out to President Biden following the migrant tragedy. Jonathan Cloto is standing by with the latest. And this has been the big incident of the morning. Uh, Jonathan, uh, rather, I'm sorry, Stephen Cavazos is coming up with an update coming up right here on GMSA. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Governor Abbott will be holding a press conference later today providing a border security update. Coming up on GMSA, we'll bring you the latest on that and also the human smuggling tragedy. Generous rain in the area late yesterday, sunnier skies and cooler temperatures this morning. It's going to be a good day. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us. What a treat to have all that rain, and it's just a nice morning today. Yeah, if uh, you could safely do so, last night's storms were a bit of a spectator sport. I caught myself going out a couple times just to look and smell. Yeah, just it was so sitting there looking out the window, like you said, and a phrase that uh, we haven't heard you say in a long time, cooler. Cooler yes. this morning, yeah. Very yeah, especially nice. hill country, right? We, yeah, we are actually, we were below normal yesterday for the high temperature, stayed at 91 degrees as expected. And this morning we are at 70, which is four below normal and a little bit of uh, maybe some haze off in the distance, but good looking sunrise this morning. A couple of extra uh, clouds way off there to the east. 70, yeah, that's uh, seems like the lowest we've been in forever. Now there is a 
fair amount of humidity with the dew point up to 68 to measure moisture in the atmosphere. And a lot of that is the moisture coming in, coming up out of the ground from the rain that we had. So don't think we're going to complain about the humidity this morning at all. Mold is moderate. The updated count is going to be coming out in about, uh, say, 45 minutes to an hour. So partly cloudy skies this morning. And just a couple of storms. We're not completely done with rain chances, but they've dropped considerably from yesterday. It's not unfortunately going to be a repeat of what we had around here yesterday. We are going to be getting back up just slightly above normal up to 95 for a high temperature. Now a few more clouds uh, will be around tomorrow as well as Friday. We'll still have a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, primarily down to the southeast, which is the same situation today. And we're going to be in the uh, lower 90s. So we get a a little bit of a break before the heat really starts to get cranked up as we go into the weekend. One leftover shower or two on Saturday. And yeah, it is uh, Fourth of July weekend is definitely going to live up to what you'd think of for Fourth of July weekend. It is going to be hot and hotter and getting hotter. Unfortunately, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, still got that problem on 281? Yeah, we still do, Mike. 281 has been a bit of a problem mess, I should say, here at Grayson, not far from the Pearl, but we are seeing some progress out there. It does look like a, a tow truck is there to do tow away that vehicle. Now, we don't have any information, unfortunately, but we'll work to get that a little bit later from San Antonio Police, so not clear if the driver or anyone else faced injuries, but we're hoping everybody's okay. It looks like traffic's doing a little bit better as well as we take Take a look at the map in the northbound lanes not far from Grayson is where we saw a slight buildup, but now not really seeing anything but green on the screen. So good news there, but let's get that wide look at the map. Nothing else really to point out other than those active construction spots. I did notice some barricades near 35 in Salado Creek, so uh, make sure you watch out anytime you see those barricades. Not really seeing anything uh, in terms of any roads out there, but always good to be safe. Traveling into San Antonio, well, we have those travel times for you right now. Coming in from Seguin, still pretty green with 20 nine minutes to the Alamo City, about half an hour, a little more than that coming up from 87 and Lavernia and right now 29 minutes if you're traveling up from Floatisville. Not really concerned about that, but as we bring it back to Transguide here again, looks like we have a better update and we'll continue to watch the roads closely. But as always, make sure you do the same. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say they are looking for the one who got away, a person involved in a carjacking and much more on the southwest side. That criminal made a mess of a neighborhood near Warhorse and War Cloud Drives. Katrina Weber is there with a live report to look at that damage. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that includes cars and other property. Well, that's right. For starters, take a look at this backyard fence. It's just been reduced to splinters. That car came straight through this backyard. Uh, taking out two sections of the fence. There also was a fire hydrant here. It got knocked clear across the street, and then there was a car parked right here at the curb that was knocked into the middle of the street. The police say all of this was the result of a carjacking where the criminals were trying to get away from them. They say two men with guns stole a car from another man after three this morning at his apartment complex a few miles away from here. Officers spotted that car and followed it. It ended up in this neighborhood. They say once the people inside realized that police were in the area, they took off. They drove through that, uh, they drove that stolen SUV right through the fence, hit that parked car and the fire hydrant. Then they bailed out and left it in someone else's front yard. The police arrested one man right away. They also did an extensive search for that other man with their helicopter and canine, but never did find him. The police say one of the officers suffered a minor injury. They say the uh, canine accidentally nipped that officer. He was checked out here at the scene, and he is expected to be okay. But, of course, it will take some, some extensive repairs in this neighborhood before things are back to normal and okay here. Reporting live on the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, Governor Greg Abbott will be holding a press conference in Eagle Pass to give a border security update. He will be joined by the director of the DPS. Jonathan Goto joins us live with the latest on this developing story. And Jonathan, what can you tell us? Stephanie, Mark, we are learning more and more as this story unfolds and develops. Officials say there were at least 62 migrants stuffed into the back of that tractor trailer. We're also learning at least three people are in custody today, including the truck driver. Let's take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this week. San Antonio and uh, 
We're learning that the truck's registration to a home in San Antonio and detaining two men from Mexico on weapons charges. Human smuggling, a growing problem now because of the record surge of migrants arriving at the border from Central America and Mexico. 239,000 were detained last month alone. Border Patrol officials now with this warning to people desperate to cross into the U.S. With the rising temperatures in South Texas, this is a guaranteed death sentence. It's not worth it. Do not place your life or the lives of your loved ones in the hands of these criminals. Calling it a humanitarian crisis, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar sending a letter to President Joe Biden last night asking for more resources and a meeting. Case had obtained a copy of that letter in which the sheriff asked for more assistance in fighting those that, quote, profit off the misery of smuggling victims, end quote. He also calls Governor Greg Abbott's tactics at the border ineffective and a campaign stunt. The sheriff ends his letter by saying, I'm asking for you to meet with myself and other urban county Texas sheriffs so that together we can address these issues at hand, not as the enemy invasion has it's been portrayed, but as a humanitarian crisis, it truly is. Now, this is the ter third time Javier Salazar has written a letter to the president. In the letter, he says he has yet to receive a reply. Of course, this is a story that we're going to continue to follow and provide you coverage in our later newscast. You can keep up with the latest on our website, ksat.com. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. President Biden released a statement. He called the deaths horrifying and heartbreaking. The president goes on to say in part, quote, my administration will continue to do everything possible to stop human smugglers from, and traffickers from taking advantage of people who are seeking to enter the United States between ports of entry, end quote. The president released a statement while in Europe. He's been there since Saturday for the inter international summits, the G7. And if you take out your phone and scan this QR code, it will take you right to our webpage where we have all the information on this migrant tragedy, along with the latest information that we know so far. There is other news this morning. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was shot while driving along I-35 and near I-10 downtown overnight. Happened near the intersection of Frio Street and Cesar Chavez around 1030 last night. SAPD says the man was driving when another vehicle pulled up next to him and a passenger in that vehicle opened fire. Police say the driver of the first vehicle was hit under the eye and that the bullet exited his neck. But somehow the man was able to exit South Alamo and get to a bus station to call for help. He was taken to a hospital, but so far there is no word on his condition. This morning, the grandmother of the Uvalde school shooter is out of University Hospital. Celia Martinez Gonzalez was shot before the shooter attacked Robb Elementary School, where 19 students and two teachers died. The 66-year-old was discharged from the hospital yesterday. Gonzalez was shot in the face, but was still able to call 911. A family member told the New York Post that the bullet went into her jaw next to her mouth and shattered her teeth. In a tweet, University Hospital wrote that she was in good condition. Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District is getting a $10 million donation. Last week, the city's mayor said Rob Elementary would be demolished. The large donation is coming from HEB and the Butt family. They gave the money to the school district's new nonprofit, the Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation. Money will go towards a new school building and a memorial park, which would be built at the current school's location. It will also go towards increased security at the new campus. Time now, 639 and 70 degrees for now. Looking for a new job after the break? The best advice to help you reach the top. 643, how often should you get promoted at work? Some say every six months. Really? All right. Others are lucky if they get moved up every six years. That sounds more like it. Mm -hmm. Forbes.com reports the average employee gets promoted every three years, but there's no guarantee. RJ Marquez takes a closer look. You go above and beyond, stick with it, don't complain. Don't trust anyone. Networking and then doing lots of different things so that you have a broad knowledge of how everything works is probably the best thing. Researchers examined more than 63,000 employees around the world at various career stages and occupations and identified the four most common pieces of advice people receive about their careers. The first, take your career into your own hands. Studies show this is a good one. People who take full ownership of their careers are more likely to have higher performance ratings and better morale in their current job. Another piece of wisdom, network outside of your company and industry. Workers who do this are more likely to have an open mindset and greater success. Just to do what you love. 
And Super cliche. Follow your passion is another common phrase you may hear. Researchers say people who do this are slightly happier at work. The last piece of advice, be careful about jumping at the next opportunity. Studies show this approach can actually be detrimental. Employees who are always looking for the next job have lower morale and do not experience greater objective career success. Every little piece of advice that you get from everybody along your career just makes it what it is. And many experts believe to get promoted, it's important to manage up. The Harvard Business Review defines that as being effective and creating value for your bosses and your company. So come prepared and work harder than anyone else in the office. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 644. And it looks like things are still a little slow there off of 281 and Grayson. Actually getting a little bit better, Steph. Let's get a look, though, around town 35 at US 90. The morning is moving, as you can see more folks out there this early. But we are seeing some slowdowns in other spots of town. Just be prepared for that. 35 at Salado Creek. We did see some barricades out there a little bit earlier, but uh, it looks like first responders just moved those out of the way. So the roads may be open in that direction. So some good news. But bringing it to the map, uh, the area that we've been mentioning throughout the morning is here off 281 northbound at Grayson. Now we're not seeing that slowdown anymore, but those northbound lanes of 35 seeing a little bit of a delay. But as we get a wide look at the map, it looks like we have a few crashes off of the main highways, so you have to watch out for that. But it doesn't look like it's going to impact the majority of people's commute this early in the morning. Thankfully, it's just been pretty quiet. So that issue off 281 at Grayson looks like it's getting ready to clear. But as we get one last look at Transguide US 90 at Couples, that's a pretty busy spot, so just be prepared for that. But other than that, things are moving just fine. Thank you, Stephen. I cheated and looked at where that's coming from. Yeah. Wow, it's a lot of rain there. Yeah, it, so some folks that got rain yesterday didn't get it the previous day and vice versa, but out there in Fair Oaks Ranch, five inches, just about five inches in the two days, and it was an inch and a half on uh, Monday, and then yesterday, three and a half inches of rain, and that was uh, one of the situations in and around town where, like at the airport, it was a third of an inch, but then you go, you know, a couple of miles in, in either direction and picked up two, three, three and a half inches worth of rain, so, boy, I bet that was just the ground just kind of absorbed that and sucked that all in like a dry sponge. Beautiful sunrise this morning, and we've got most of the clear skies obviously and talk about some of those uh, rainfall totals uh, there was the path all the way from Kerrville down I-10 in toward Bernie area Fair Oaks Ranch area um, some of the radar estimates just vouch for what that uh, rain gauge said about three and a half inches of rain this was from yesterday in the past 24 hours and then going on down to the southeast in toward Victoria and in and around town again the airport third of an inch and then you go what as the crow flies mile, mile and a half maybe over there just outside uh, 410 35 about three inches worth of rain up there just over three inches down on the southwest side of town over there toward Medina Lake a couple of inches and uh, up in toward New Braunfels and three and a half close to four inches of radar estimates not ground measurements but still a lot of beautiful beautiful rain fell yesterday today we will see one or two of those showers out there Nowhere near as much as what we had around here yesterday. Temperatures in the low 70s right now will warm up quickly up through the mid to upper 80s late morning, 88 at noon, and then getting into the mid 90s later on today. Yesterday we stayed at 91. The first time this month we have been, uh, we've had a below normal high temperature. 20% chance for a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm, primarily down to the southeast later on today, which is what computer models are indicating. Just those couple of showers down there. We're going to have more sunshine today. Obviously, that's going to help to uh, to heat us up. Then we go into tomorrow, and we'll start to see a few more clouds around here tomorrow. It's this low coming in out of the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, so that's going to help to throw some more clouds in, keep temperatures down a couple of degrees. Again, one or two showers, thunderstorm around here tomorrow and that's going to be the case on Friday but most of this is going to be well off to the east of us we'll still have a lingering shower or two or at least the chance of it on Saturday and then temperatures start to uh, shoot back up again so it's been a nice reprieve but the end unfortunately is in sight 88 degrees partly cloudy skies and high temperature today up to 95 just a degree or two above normal with a shower or thunderstorm around here again 20 percent chance of rain mainly to the southeast tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, a couple of them here and there. We're in the low 90s Thursday, Friday, back to the mid 90s Saturday, back to the upper 90s. And 
Yeah, we're looking at some uh, even some triple. That means, you know, upper 90s here in town. That means triple digits now along the Rio Grande Valley. Going to be hot 4th of July weekend. How many farmers and ranchers are grinning this morning while sipping their coffee and looking out over their fields or herds? Yeah, because over the past couple of days, we have had mm -hmm. you know, rain scattered about here and there. Not everybody got it, not mm -hmm. drop breaker, but it's been beautiful to see. So I, I wonder if it was too little too late. A lot I've seen corn around here lately. It looks like it's already burned and gone. I know we had somebody on yeah. SA Live and talking about the peach crop up in uh, Fredericksburg sure. said yeah. because of the uh, dry conditions, peaches were smaller, but it was concentrating maybe some of the, the sugars and the okay. sweetness. So, so it's give and could, take situation, yeah. but yeah. So smaller, but could be a tasty crop. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll still take that rain. Thank you, Mike. About 10 till 70 degrees. And coming up a little later on GMA, here comes the groom. Sam Asgari talks about married life with Britney Spears. Plus, he just won the NBA championship. Golden State's Draymond Green will be live in Times Square. Tomorrow on GMSA, tips on tackling some top summer home projects and what you need to know before you get started. And taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful out there. And uh, like Mike said, a, a cleaner camera lens because of all that rain. We'll be right back. In today's Tech Bites, the party is permanently over at Airbnb properties. The party ban was put in place on Airbnb about six months into the pandemic, but now the company has made it permanent, saying it's been received positively by hosts Violators can be suspended or even removed from the platform. Some of the home goods ordered from Wayfair will soon arrive on self-driving trucks. The deliveries by Waymo's autonomous tractor trailers are part of a pilot program getting underway this month in Texas. Each truck will operate on its own under the supervision of a driver and a software engineer. And the developer of Pokemon Go is creating an augmented reality game with the NBA, NBA All World will ask users to explore their neighborhoods to find stars like Steph Curry. Players will also be able to compete in mini games against virtual players. Those are your Tech Bites. Good morning, coming up here on GMA on a Wednesday, the fallout from that bombshell testimony in front of the January 6th committee. The former top White House aide's stunning claims about former President Trump's actions that day. And the family of one of the Americans captured in Ukraine is speaking out this morning, what they know about his condition. And our series, helping you find the positive and the negative. Today, we show you how to turn fear into a strength. And so much more on Good Morning America. A local nonprofit on a mission to bring comfort and warmth to veterans, hospitals, and deployed service members. Today on GMS 89, how you can help with that mission. Plus, we're getting a look backstage at the Woodlawn Theater's performance of The Little Mermaid. We're going to have those stories and more today on GMSA at 9. Time to check in with Steven and get an update on traffic at 5 till 7. Looking a lot better out here as we get a look at Tweety Winnie Grayson. We had a pretty serious crash that lasted for a little while now, but first responders were able to clear that out. Now it looks like the morning is moving. Just remember to drive carefully out there as we get one last look at the map. Just a lot of those active construction zones that will be taking place throughout the day into the later evening hours. So always Make sure that you plan ahead, but let's get one last look here at Transguide because there really has not been a whole lot to talk about this morning. We did see some of you closures out there, but for now, things are moving just fine. Lots of sunshine as you can see in those pictures. We are at 70 degrees right now and going to make it up to 95 later on today. One or two showers, thunderstorms primarily to the uh, southeast and uh, one or two of them the next couple of days. Then it's going to be hot this weekend. want to give a quick shout out. You saw this gentleman on GMA yesterday local guy, Nicky Barone. He's an acquaintance of our family. Uh, he won the best actor for high school um, talent in the country, the Jimmy Award, a couple of nights ago. So he was in, nice. my son was in a play with him a few years ago. So, Outstanding. Real nice guy. Oh, so yeah, cool. best actor in the country. So. Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, I, I heard you, you briefly mention it yesterday. I'm glad we're giving him a shout out today. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Stephen, Mike. Thank you guys. Yes, and thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here at nine. Have a good day.